Hello guys, so in today's video I want to do is basically explain to you how to make yourself secure or as much secure, doesn't make sense what I said, doesn't matter, uh, basically as secure as you can on the internet. Yo, what up guys, so in today's video I want to do is basically explain to you how to keep yourself secure on the dark web. So, the first thing you should do is make sure you have a firewall turned on. Now, as I said in the past videos for lots and lots of times, you need to have a good firewall. Windows Defender is not good it, because it basically Windows Defender allows sort of certain viruses and certain exploits to sort of bypass the, the, the firewall, right? I have tested this before. I don't have any recordings because that was before even I started YouTube. But a year ago was up was basically if you ever been in ethical hacking sort of long enough or you've maybe seen it before, um, Windows, uh, no Windows, oh, well, PowerShell Empire, right? There was basically a sort of a Python program that sort of allowed you to make exploits and control any computers remotely through basically just a program that you could make within 30 seconds, right? Now, it's, it doesn't work anymore. But when I used to learn ethical hacking, I downloaded it. I sent it to a Windows computer system with Windows Defender installed. And Windows Defender never actually you know, never stopped the program or never actually deleted the program or never even discovered that, that there was a virus. Now, the PowerShell Empire is not really supported anymore and it doesn't work anymore. Now, Windows Defender actually does detect it, but, you know, it's still stupid that it never detected before, which sort of shows you that Windows Defender is not the best option. So re I recommend myself, yes, this is not sponsored. This I'm just giving you a product I believe is very good. You can either use it or you don't need to use it. It's up to you. If you don't use Malwarebytes, you can use either AVG, Avist, or as I said, Malwarebytes. They're the top three programs I recommend. Don't use Kaspersky, because Kaspersky is um, a Russian software and is linked to the KGB, which is the Russian intelligence. So therefore, I don't suggest using Kaspersky, right? So Malwarebytes is one of the best programs. Now, in the future videos, I'm gonna show you how to configure your file properly. I'm not gonna show you now because um, it will basically take too long, plus it's up to you how you configure it. And I actually recommend buying a premium. Premium actually makes your computer even more secure. It has my firewall when I bought the premium um, premium subscription. It actually does help you because it scans my network as well for any suspicious devices. I'm pretty sure Malwarebytes does the same thing, but it's probably not a cheap, not the cheap version. You need to buy the premium version. So. In the comment section, I'll leave a link. If you buy from my link, you'll support the channel. If you don't want to support the channel, you can always uh, type Malwarebytes and you can buy it with my link. Okay, so that's enough about firewalls. Um, the second step is you need to make sure your op operating system's up to date, right? Now, the reason is because it stops certain exploits vulnerabilities and it basically is just, it's not, n not negotiable for you to basically, you know, argue about this. Uh, your operating system needs to be up to date. The third option is you need to use a virtual machine. Virtual machines make you secure because what happens is it basically it's a computer inside a computer and what happens if, if for some reason, for example, you get a virus on that machine, virtual machine, all you do is delete it and it doesn't actually infect your computer, your host machine, right? It stays on the guest machine, you can delete it or you can make a backup and that's you you're sorted, you can go back whatever you're doing, right? Now, the second step is make sure you have your um, virtual machine settings up to date. Now, I'll show you, sorry, not up to date. Make sure your network adapter is set to NAT. I'll show you how to do this, um, if I just can get. So basically, all you do is go to left corner, um, left corner, player, manager, manage, sorry, and virtual machine settings. When you're in this, make sure it's NAT. Never use bridged. Never use bridged because that connects directly to your network. And I checked, it actually does connect uh, because I went on my, you know, admin account on the your local network and it actually does connect it. So don't, never use bridged. Never ever. Unless you're going to be exploiting your own devices by then, I suggest turning internet off for your security. And that's basically you for um, virtual machine settings, right? There's nothing else you sort of need to use. Make sure, and by the way, make sure you have shared folders disabled because if you have shared folders enabled, uh, especially with your host machine, 
you can actually send viruses between and you can, you know, sort of make your... You can basically get, for example, ransomware on your computer without you even knowing. So make sure you have it disabled. That's very important. So, um, the next first step is to not use a VPN and a Tor service. Now, the reason is because sort of if you use a Tor a VPN service and a Tor service at the same time, uh, you're sort of... Not maybe not your security, but your anonymity is going to be um, weaker because that means your actual anonymous traffic, which you would you would have with Tor, it goes through Tor and it goes through your VPN. And obviously, when it goes through your VPN, it's not anonymous because your VPN is actually directly linked to you, um, to your account. And obviously, your IP address is public to the VPN provider because they know your IP address; they encrypt it. And if you're going to say, well, your VPN provider should protect you against this, not really, because if you commit something, if you do something illegal on the dark web or wherever, they will actually, it's by law, they have to sort of um, allow the police to track you. Therefore, I suggest not using a VPN. You need to trust the Tor browser. Tor browser is, is not supported by any government. It's actually a non-profit organization, which means they do this for voluntarily, they don't get paid any, any money for this, and they do it for you, for you to make sure your internet basically is internet freedom, right, let's call it this, internet freedom. Now the second, the, the next step, I'm not sure what step we are on, sorry, the next step is make sure that whenever you use a Tor browser, I click the wrong browser, whenever you use a Tor browser, your IP doesn't come from the same country, like example, what I mean by this, example, if I was to go on eBay right now, eBay, and make sure, as as you can see, my IP address is going through Germany, Netherlands, and Germany. Now, the reason is this is not very good, to be honest. I would suggest having your IP address coming from three different countries. Now, the reason is because Tor browser is run on private computers. So what that means is people set up Tor relays on their own computers, and therefore that's how you get IP addresses from their, um, from their basically from their private network, right? So therefore, if the police is, has easier access to actually track you down if it's in the same country. Because, for example, right, you come at a crime, you shouldn't, you should never do it. I'm just telling you, I'm just trying to sort of get you on the, you know, trying to help you here. So basically, if you, for example, you come at a crime in Germany, and there's, for example, all your free servers are in Germany, or Tor Real is in Germany, you have a possibly 95% chance that you get tracked down, right? Because it's coming from the same government and there's only one government basically chasing you or one country or the governments in one country, which means they sort of have the, over, the overall jurisdiction in the country, right? But it was a different story. For example, if you were to have a connection from Netherlands to, for example, Norway and Iceland, right? That means one government has to contact other governments and therefore the government has to contact the companies, they have to basically sort of make this chain of just emails, notes, lists, posts, and everything. It's just overall a fuckfest, right? That's what I like to call fuckfest. Sometimes it's not even worth it, or it will take basically months before they will actually do anything. Make sure your sort of IP address is coming from three different servers. That's that's why I recommend, right? It's just to make sure your um, security anonymity is up to the highest possible standards. The next step I want to do is basically within the Tor browser. Make sure Tor browser is up to date. And if you go to the right corner, uh, it will show you a wee shield, a wee small shield right in the right corner. I will zoom it up on the video. Click settings and make sure your safest options are um, the safest. Now this disables, as you can see, disables JavaScript, um, images and stuff like that. And you can block dangerous content as well, if you want that. And there's also HTTPS. I suggest having HTTPS only mode in all windows. Um, you don't need to necessarily have this on because I think what this will do is block every hidden dark web website, I'm not sure. Safest will disable JavaScript, which increases your security. It stops basically any viruses or any malicious websites from accessing your computer. Now, when you disable this, and by the way, your connection, your connection should always be, always connect automatically, and that should be, you should not basically do anything else. 
as you can see internet test and tor network connected don't use any bridges don't use any bridges just leave as it is make sure you have a quick start turned on and assume right that so the last tip i want to say is don't use your private details use something that you've never used before on the dark web on the dark web and the actual internet right make a nickname um, try and don't use the same nickname too much because you can also sort of, you know, give you information about you this way. Try and use basically just like have a new identity every time you sign uh, to a new website or to many websites, right? And don't use your private email, for example, don't use Gmail or anything like that. Use an email like a dark web email or a throwaway account or something that's not very popular like and don't, just don't use your email like don't use your private emails on the dark web right use something that you can if it gets tracked or something that you can just lose it or if it gets hacked just something that you can afford to lose right so make sure you're actually being smart on the dark web right don't use your private details don't use your phone numbers don't use nothing don't give anybody your private details if you need to use details, make sure you, every time you use your details, like, make something up. Don't use your public details. I don't know if your name's John Smith. Don't say John Smith. Use Jane Baxter, right? Just make something up. And make sure if you're using those details, make sure for every single website that you're going to use fake details, you use different details. Right? It's just... Use just... Before you do something on the dark web, make sure that you're thinking about what you're doing, right? Because it can get you in trouble. And obviously the sort of the last step is to make sure that you're not visiting the website you're not supposed to. Example, if you go down Hidden Wiki, make sure you don't buy anything, don't buy any drugs, don't buy any guns. Because that's what they want. Um just a second I need to disable my VPN. For some reason I have it turned on. There we go. So as you can see the connection might be a bit slower, but that's because it's going through, as I said, for like a couple computers, right? And it matters how the connection, uh, what the connection is, fast, slow. As you can see, this is the, this is actually using the onion. Onion is, means it's on the dark web. It's not disposable, uh, not accessible by normal search engines. Now, as you can see, there's dark web hackers, there's premium PayPal, there's everything. You should not really, Euro guns, as you can see, there's guns, right? I'll go on the website to show you. I think it's... Yeah, this is the most popular website. I've seen this before on other videos. As you can see, there's Desert, Desert Eagle. And stuff like that. Make sure you don't buy anything, right? Because first of all, you're going to get scammed and it's not good. Just don't buy anything. Right, hope you've enjoyed this video. This hope you've enjoyed the content. If you can leave a like, subscribe, comment. And see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.